Hey everyone, it's Sarah from Sassy Reads, and today I'm going to be doing a book haul. My dog just walked into the room. Look at her, she's so cute. So, um, these are all the books that I have accumulated and bought during the fall 2018 semester. So, during the summer, I read The Shining by Stephen King, so it was only natural that I go out and pick up its sequel, Dr. Sleep, which follows Danny Torrance um, when he's an adult, and I'm super excited to read this one. I'm kind of putting off picking this one up right now, because I kind of want to wait until the perfect time, but I just love the way this book looks. So yes, I'm super excited for this one, and this is definitely a Stephen King novel that I can't wait to read, mainly because I was a huge fan of Danny Torrance's perspective within The Shining. In my opinion, it was the best part of the novel. So super excited to learn more about The Shining and Danny's powers in this one. And then the next four books, well... Okay, so I had to buy four books for my Brit Lit class, um, which is exciting. But in the midst of all these, I also picked up another Barnes & Noble classic. So let me talk about that one first. Um, I picked up this Barnes & Noble classic. It's called The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And it also includes other stories by Robert Louis Stevenson. I'm incredibly excited for this one. And look at how gorgeous this paperback is. The Barnes & Noble paperback classics are my absolute favorite, and I got this for $5, which is amazing. So, they're great investments into your collection. But the book that I had to purchase for class was Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, which is also gorgeous. And I love the way that these two look together. But anyway, um, yeah, I had to read this for class. I gave it four stars. It's pretty decent. It's a bit of a slog, but... I really enjoy the dichotomy and the complexities of Dr. Frankenstein and the monster. Particularly, I like the monster and who he eventually becomes through watching other people. And yeah, I'm quite a fan of this one. Um, wasn't a huge fan though, which is why I got four stars, because it does have its problems. But again, I really enjoyed it, and I'm glad that I read this one for class. So, I'm always excited to have more Warren's Noble Classic paperbacks. Um, a part of my collection because I just love them. Okay, the next book that I got is Oryx and Crake, Crake by Margaret Atwood. You're probably like, but Margaret Atwood's a British, not British, she's a Canadian author. Yes, but my Brit Lit class focused primarily on British literature through the modern lens and colonialism, and Canada is a part of the British Empire at one point or another, so it counts. And um, I adored Oryx and Crake. I gave it five stars. It's fantastic. I'm going to talk more about it in a um, review for it. But this one redeemed Margaret Atwood for me because um, I had a, a bit of a rough go with her this year. After reading The Heart Goes Last and giving that one star, I kind of gave up on Atwood. But this redeemed it for me because obviously Atwood is a remarkable just constructor of character studies, dystopian worlds, and slight horror that is grounded in reality. So I definitely recommend this one if it's something you're interested in dystopian-wise. It's really well acclaimed in the dystopian genre, so I think you'd be doing a disservice to yourself not to pick it up. And then the next book um, I have is White Teeth by Zadie Smith. I had never um, had the intention of getting around to Zadie Smith. She's definitely on my TBR, but I never thought like I would pick up. Hello, Jolie. Hi, she wants to be on camera. I never thought that I would pick up a Zadie Smith mo novel, um, but this was a great prompting to do it, especially because she's quite whimsical and absurd, and this follows um, generations of people who are connected to British colonialism and its impact on their lives and their narratives and whether or not history has a way of impacting us more so than we realize. Are we made by our history or do we allow our history to make us? Really interesting stuff. I gave this 4.5 stars. I'm going to talk more about it in a review. But if you haven't picked up a Zadie Smith, Smith novel, I definitely recommend it. It was not a novel that let me down by any means. And 
I, I'm glad that I was prompted to pick this one up because I discovered an author that I think I would have missed given my own um, choice. Just because her stuff never really appealed to me um, description wise, but her writing style is so brilliant. Um, ignore the description, just dive in and see if she's for you. That's my best advice. And the last book that I got for my class is A Passage to India by E.M. Forrester. This edition is beat up. Like, I paid $11 for this on Amazon, and I was so salty when it came in, because I was like, look at this. This is old, ratty tatty, but that's okay. Um, I did enjoy A Passage to India. It kind of reminded me, um, a lot of To Kill a Mockingbird, especially because there's a trial, and, um, we are set in India, and the basic con, like, comment made at the beginning is can an Indian become friends with a British man and so this looks into that it also goes into um, the trial when an accusation is made against a well-respected Indian doctor and what that means for him as well as the accusation and the fact that the accusation was a lie and a fabrication. So yeah, I definitely really liked it. 3.5 stars. It was a nice, fun time. Um, yeah, it's a quick read. Surprisingly, Ann Forrester is one of those um, classicists who people are like, oh, he must be dense. But that was so readable. Like, I read like 20 pages in like 10 minutes. So definitely recommend it. The next section is all Christian living. So um, if that's not your jam, bye. But if it is, here's some great recommendations. Um, I'm currently reading this. It's called Uninvited. Living Loved When You Feel Less Than, Left Out, and Lonely, Lonely by Lisa Turkis. This is one of the best books that I've picked up all year. It's groundbreaking, it's emotional, it's hard-hitting, and it's factual to what it's like when you feel rejected. And it tackles so many different topics and layers. And Lisa Turkis is one of my favorite um, Christian speakers and authors. So I'm so excited that I picked this up because I had been recommended, um, someone who's a close friend of mine had recommended it, and it's definitely an amazing novel. Can't recommend it enough. Then, um, my life group, which is a group of girls that, um, I disciple, um, with a co-leader, we decided to take a trip to Mardell's, which is a Christian bookstore, and it was so much fun, and I got two books on the way there. Oh, we also saw the Hate You Give adaptation after our trip to Mardell's. We all loved it. Ten out of ten. Um, I think there was six or seven of us who went watch it, and we all loved it. Um, and so I got two books at Mardell's in the bargain section. I got, and still she laughs, Defiant Joy in the Depths of Suffering by Kate Merrick. I love this cover because it has flowers. And the Lord always speaks to me in flowers. So this is like my kind of thing. Um, I haven't been called to pick this one up yet, but I have it on my shelf for whenever that time arises. And the next one I have is She Believes, Embracing a Life You Were Created to Live by Debbie Lindell with Susie Flory. I read a devotional on the Bible app for this during the summer, and it blew me away. It's one of my favorite devotionals. Can't recommend it enough. Um, so yeah, I got this for like, I think, five dollars, and it was the last one in the bargain section, and I was like, it's a steal, it's a score, yes. So I'm excited to pick this one up in the upcoming year. The next two books I got on another trip to um, Mardell's. This one was on a whim with my best friend. We were like, uh, we were doing, like, stuff for finals, and I was like, let's go to Mardell's, so we ended up going to Mardell's. She had told me about this book, um, before we decided to take the trip, and it's called Crazy Love by Francis Chan. Um, Francis Chan is a really well-known Christian speaker and author, and I'm really excited to pick this one up, because I've heard great things about it, and she really was enjoying it, so that'll be fun. And then the last one that I got is Finding Sella, The Simple Practice of Peace When You Need It Most by Kristen Kill. I found this in the bargain section at Mardell's, and the way that I found it is a complete divine encounter from the Holy Spirit, because the Lord was like, stay in this aisle, and I was looking, and I was like, I don't see anything. So, like, I turned around, and I went to the other side of the aisle, and, like, I saw this book, and I was like, that's it. And, like, God was like, pick it up. So I picked it up, and I read the back, and I was like, this is it. This is the book. And so I got it, and I'm reading it now, and I love it. So yeah, those are all the books that I got in the fall semester. Let me know down below in the comments if there's any that you're interested in picking up. And bye, happy.